Hey, what's up guys, Wired here, and for the past few years I've been using this thing as my daily driver smartphone. I think it's time for an upgrade. So, yes, I may be a little late to the party, but this is the Samsung Galaxy S7, the supposed top dog of Android smartphones at the moment, and I have a lot of good things to say about this device, so let's get cracking. Just to get the specs out of the way, this phone's rocking a quad-core Snapdragon 820 in the US, and Samsung's own in-house Exynos 8990 octa-core chip everywhere else. I live in Canada, so my device has the Exynos. Moving on, we've got the Adreno 530 GPU in America, and the Mali T880 MP12 everywhere else. We've got 4GB of RAM, 32GB of internal storage with, thank goodness, microSD expansion. The GPU pushes a beautiful 5.1 inch Super AMOLED panel at a 2560 by 1440 resolution. Colors are a little oversaturated, but in this case that's a good thing. Coming from a mediocre 720p display, the panel's sharp and crisp images are just mind-blowing. Video consumption is also great on this device, but the downward-facing speakers take the experience down a notch, as they do get loud, but they sound a bit tinny at the higher volumes. Moving on to ports, we have the standard micro USB port for charging and data, which is slightly odd seeing as most flagships these days ship with USB Type-C, but it's a definite advantage here for Samsung, since even in late 2016 USB-C isn't very prevalent in the everyday world. It comes equipped with Samsung's Fast Charge, the equivalent of Qualcomm Quick Charge 2.0, wireless Qi charging, and practically every sensor available. The headphone jack is present, <coughs> Apple, <coughs> and the SIM slash SD card tray is on top of the device. The phone is decked out with a 3000 mAh battery, which in my experience has lasted just around a full day. I used to have an arguably bad habit of plugging in the phone whenever I'm not using it, but that's slowly changing thanks to this massive battery. Now I'm starting to just leave it, and when the battery gets low, plug it in for a bit, and you're good to go. Charging is quite fast actually, I've left it charging for around half an hour and get around 40% of battery. The body of this phone is built with a beautiful combination of glass front and back and metal rails. It feels great in the hand and the slight curves on the back add to that feeling. However, the glass makes it also one of the now ubiquitous fingerprint magnets. Slap a case or skin on it though, and fingerprints are a thing of the past. The metal rails feel great and there's hardly a camera bump thanks to the phone's body being filled out with battery. The home button feels great and the fingerprint sensor is pretty fast, although it does sometimes miss my finger. Flanking the fingerprint sensor are the capacitive hardware buttons that are actually reversed from the default Android layout. To be honest, I really don't like the design of the buttons and would much prefer the stock Android square and triangle, but Samsung's been doing this forever, so I understand. Yeah, I know, mine don't light up, but that's on purpose. Stay tuned for another video. One of, one of the things that make this phone so good is the camera. Here we've got a 12 megapixel rear shooter with an f1.7 aperture, phase detection autofocus, optical image stabilization, and an LED flash. In practice, the camera performs beautifully, although saturated and sharpened a bit too much sometimes. Thanks to that wide aperture, it's really easy to blur out the background of your shot for that really nice bokeh if you so desire. Low light performance is good, and the pictures it takes are pretty tolerable, even with that crazy high ISO. The camera app is quick to launch with a double tap of the home button, and comes with a bunch of cool features that might be called gimmicky because you probably aren't going to use them that much, but they're fun nonetheless. Slow-mo and time-lapse modes are great, and there's a manual mode, which I really like, as for me, full control over my pictures is pretty important. The phone comes with 4K video, which is an absolute blessing. It looks great on on the phone and on any other screen. Autofocus is extremely fast, and this is a really good phone for just filming anything, pretty much. Expect to see at least a few videos on the channel filmed with this phone. 
The front facing camera is a 5 megapixel arrangement which takes a good selfie but I've noticed some distortion on the edges of the picture. I did a little digging and found out the front camera uses a wide angle lens which means your face will get distorted a bit if it's close to the edges. Samsung has a quick fix for that in the beauty mode options, just enable face correction and you're good to go for the most part. Now for the software of the device. For the longest time, Samsung's TouchWiz has been the blight of an otherwise great smartphone, and this time around it's just a little bit better. Samsung has incorporated some of Google's material design aesthetic into the software, and the majority of the menus don't actually look all that bad. However, the real problem here with the software is the overall feel and usability. While testing, I used TouchWiz for the better part of two weeks, but to be honest, I couldn't stand it and ended up switching to Nova Launcher for a more stock Android look and feel. Pixel Launcher is also a good op option, as Google Pixel just released and there are a lot of APKs you can download, so if you want full Google, there's that. Coming from a Motorola phone whose software has always been really close to Android, TouchWiz really wasn't for me. It's worth noting, however, that software really is a personal preference, and I know a lot of people that love using TouchWiz. So, in conclusion, the Galaxy S7 is a phone with great specs, a great camera, an excellent build, albeit the fingerprint magnet that is the back, and a decent software package. The user experience is wonderful, and I can wholeheartedly recommend this phone to anyone who's looking for a new flagship device on the Android market. So that's it guys, thanks for watching, leave a like if you liked it or dislike if you still think no headphone jack is the future, subscribe if you want to keep up to date with our content, and leave a comment down below about your thoughts or experiences with the phone. Do you like the new touch Let me know. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time.